Hello, that's Greg. Five in a row. Five in a row. I'm Jason. That's... Oh, you've said it. This is Tea and Toast, and today we are talking about some of the biggest failed products ever. Catchy, isn't it? I mean, can't, it's catchy if you can say it correctly. Yes, Greg, it is day five, and today we're talking about failed products. Failed products? What do you mean by failed products, well, Jason? Well, some of the biggest names, biggest brands out there, mm. don't always get it right, Greg. No. Sometimes they get it wrong. We get it wrong quite a lot, don't no, we? No, we don't ever. Well, you do. And of course, if we're talking about failed products from big companies, we have to start with New Coke. Coke's just Coca-Cola, isn't it? What you mm, But in 1985, Greg, Coca-Cola decided they needed to change the recipe of the drink. <gasps> I don't remember this. Well, I was five. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't care, would I? Um, they've been losing a bit of market share to their rivals, Pepsi. Um, Someone shouted Pepsi from over here, then. <laughs> <laughs> remember all the Pepsi... Pepsi? <laughs> all the Pepsi taste tests and all of that. Yeah? You've tried it and you got it wrong. I did, I can't believe I got it wrong. <laughs> I was adamant I got that right. Uh, blind taste tests indicated that consumers seem to prefer sweeter tastes of Pepsi Cola. So Coca-Cola decided they need to change their recipe from the original formula that they'd been going with for however long it is since they were created. Um, so in 1985 they came out with this new recipe and a massive big marketing campaign about New Coke. New Coke was everywhere. Um, and that was all they were going to sell, the new recipe. But it went wrong, Greg. Why, Jason? Everyone hated it. <laughs> Everyone. They'd be great if we get a can, wouldn't they? Hated no. it. I think if there are any cans, I think they'd probably go for a lot of money. Um, you, can, you will have recently seen it in, in Netflix, Stranger Things. I went in, 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 in Netflix, Stranger Things. Greg hasn't watched Stranger Things, everybody. Another 80s based programme that Greg doesn't know anything about. Yeah, but um, I've learned a lot about Star Wars lately, haven't I? Yeah, well done. So they introduced a new formula and they marketed it like you would not believe. There was adverts everywhere. Am I um, a Trekkie now then? No. Um, they had an advert out where workers renovating the Statue of Liberty were given cans of it Washington, in Washington DC, where thousands of cans were given away in Lafayette Park. They did, just went for it. Did this come over here time. then? I think it did, I don't know. Or perhaps it went wrong before it came over here. Um, but yeah, they went for it big time, gave it away, advertised it, spent millions on marketing to try and recapture that bit of the market that they thought they were losing out on. However, a few Coca-Cola drinkers liked it, thought it was great, but most of the people who had drunk Coke all of their lives hated it. Didn't want the formula to change, um, and they let Coca-Cola know that. There was no internet in 1985, so you can imagine there was probably demonstrations and all sorts of stuff outside Coca-Cola offices to bring back the old um, taste. So Coca-Cola had to give in, and they, but they didn't want to lose face, so they kept new Coke but brought out classic Coke as well. Is that where the classic comes from then? On the, on the... I think it might be. <gasps> so, um, new Coke eventually so. stopped being produced. Can you sort out the sound, please, by the way? Oh, yeah, it just creaked a bit. Then. It's terrible. Um, so, yeah, new Coke died a death, um, and all of that money on marketing and everything was wasted. Wow. There's um, probably an advert for it somewhere with a copyrighted song on, so I might put it in and I might not. Shall we see if it's in? Yeah. If it isn't in, we'll do this twisting thing, yeah. won't we? Let's have a look then. Here we go. Hi, we're New Edition. We're here to introduce the great new taste of Coca-Cola, the taste of today. Well, that was either brilliant or wow, that was a great spin. <laughs> We're back. 
Uh, Sony Greg, who we talked about in the previous episode, who hit the mark with the Walkman, um, failed with another of their products. Although that's not strictly fair or true, but it did fail commercially. The Betamax. I never understood it, I don't. I still don't understand it. To me, all it is, is a smaller video. What was um, the difference? The difference was, supposedly, a better format in Betamax with better sound and better picture quality. Um, for some reason, the VHS overtook Betamax, both here and abroad. Cheaper? Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. I mean, we've got... Ah, I think a lot to do with it was the length of recording. You could only fit so much on a... Betamax tape, oh, right, yeah, and you could fit more in a VHS, and particularly when short play and long play and all of that came in, um, you could fit like six hours worth on a VHS, couldn't you? I think. I think I seem to remember hearing somewhere that the problem with Betamax was you couldn't record long enough to record a whole football game in America. So if you were going out and you set your timer to record the football game, it wouldn't have enough tape to record the whole game, where a VCR would. That was one of the downfalls of Betamax. That's why. Uh, however, when we were kids, if you went into the video shop, video store, video rental store, if you're in America, there were two sections, weren't there? Betamax, VHS. Same films in different forms. It's just DVD, Blu-ray, isn't it? We have got some VHSs there, Greg, if you would like to get one down. Any particular one? Uh, no, just grab one, Greg. Why don't I get this one, Jackson? Because this is quite a good one, isn't it? This is what we call... Busters. Um, you would see shells and shells of those, and uh, not as many Betamax. They started dwindling. We have got some Betamax somewhere, but I don't know where, Greg. I don't think there's one there for you to grab hold. Oh, Supergirl is Betamax. Did you hear yourself then? What? How excited you got over seeing the Betamax. So let's compare the tapes, Greg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd just I'd get this out and go, what's this? Look at the size difference. Why have I got the smaller one in my hand then, Jason? You're holding the bigger one. Because they say often that art imitates life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Sony did in fact develop the... Um, Jason, please rewind the tape. <laughs> oh, they used to get angry when you Look at that one there! It's some, halfway through! Some video shops find you. Yeah, you rightfully so. <gasps> um, because it took a large chunk out of your life rewinding it when you got it, didn't it? What it was. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they first released Betamax in 1975 in May and it was introduced to the United States. Um, what? The first Betamax device introduced in the United States was the LV1901 console, which had a 19 inch colour monitor. They first appeared in stores in early November 1975. Um, what? <laughs> I don't know why you were so excited about a 19 inch. I don't know. I've just bought a 55 inch. It lost the videotape format war to VHS. Um, despite this, Betamax recorders would not be discontinued until 2002. So we're still making recorders up until 2002. Wow. I know. I think beta was the format used in broadcast a lot, wasn't it, in television, because of the superior quality. So who was Max then? Anyway, Betamax was a failure, commercially, but technically a success. What goes in now, an advert? Yeah. A phenomenon that's puzzled me is why some people settle for the ordinary when they could have the extraordinary. Perhaps it's caused a simply a lack of knowledge. Fortunately, I've never had that problem. So choosing a home videotape recorder was relatively easy. I chose the Sony Betamax, for when I observed how it performed so many complex technological functions with such ease and simplicity, I no longer saw a machine. I saw genius. The genius of Betamax, only from Sony. Finally, Greg, we're talking about an iconic piece of 80s nostalgia that failed, which again isn't completely fair. However... I'm talking about the DeLorean motor car, Greg. I mean, this has to be the biggest... Failure? No, I was just saying size-wise compared to what we've just done. Oh, right, yeah, it's bigger than a Betamax recorder. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's a whole car. <coughs> it obviously became famous after being used as the time machine in Back to the Future. Um, 
However, the DeLorean Motor Company had lots and lots of troubles. Um, it was innovative in its engineering. There was one problem, wasn't there? What? The doors. I think the doors are amazing. No, they are amazing, but they're not practical, are they? And the most over-engineered piece of engineering ever. The doors were so heavy that in order to develop, to get them to go up like that, they had to pay a company to develop a new system that would support the door, a new hydraulic thing. Um, it used lots of parts from other cars, which is why they are collectible now, because you can work on them and get parts from them from other, other vehicles. It had the engine, it became, it was supposed to be a mid-engine car, but they pushed the engine back. So it had that big engine in the back there, didn't it? And the boot was at the front. I mean, it, it's not... You can see why it didn't work, to be honest. But to be fair, it was an amazing car and probably would have gone on to do much better, especially with the Back to the Future uh, connection. However, it was the founder of the company, John DeLorean, who was accused of drug trafficking and all sorts of stuff that mm. caused his business to go bankrupt. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um... So it was really the founder who failed and not the car. I wonder if it had worked if he hadn't been... I think if he could have weathered his original financial problems when developing the car, the Back to the Future connection would have sold thousands, hundreds of thousands of that car for him. Yeah. That's why I was surprised it wasn't a normal car. Mm. Like, like everybody had one. Like Knight Rider. Yeah. Trans Am was a very popular car, wasn't it? It was. So the DeLorean, uh, what first came out in uh, 1981 until 1983, so obviously it already failed by the time Back to the Future came out in 1985, which is a real shame for the car and the company. Um, but John DeLorean uh, really wanted to develop a car that nobody else had seen the likes of and something that would really identify as his company. And it is iconic. Had Back to the Future not happened, would we even be talking about the DeLorean? I don't think so. I mean, let's be honest, it's the only connection that you really know it from, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, especially over the UK, because it's not... I don't think this was even out, was it? In the UK. No. There but is... We never had it on the streets, and it's worth an absolute fortune now, I know that. Oh, yeah, there is a new um, DeLorean company now. I think it's based in Texas, and I think they make their money from supplying parts for people who have got DeLoreans from the 80s and turning DeLoreans into Back to the Future DeLoreans for people. I think that's what they do, but they are called the DeLorean Motor Company, so it does exist again now. The DeLorean. Gullwing doors rise effortlessly, beckoning you inside. The sleek, stainless steel DeLorean. Beautifully crafted for long life, the DeLorean is one of the most awaited automobiles in automotive history. Drive the DeLorean. Live the dream today. It started raining just at this section. It's been raining all morning, Greg. Why are you so miserable? Just I hope the rain gets really loud about now. Why are you talking like this? The rain's really loud, and we won't be able to hear your joke. Well, okay, sound department. Yeah, because we've had some complaints, sound department. I mean, we're just in a shed doing our best, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an actual studio. There, there are no actual production people behind there. The I'm door to the shed is behind that camera. Just there. And, of course, it's free. I mean, what more do you want? Jason... <laughs> I threw a party for all the workers who helped build my house. That was nice of you, Greg. The door guy showed up late, but he really knew how to make an entrance. Chicken or ham don't take long. Mmm. Garlic sausage meat eat tongue. Mm. You can make them special, bake them, grill or fry them. Mm. Just try them, eat them, you can feed them. Mm. Or please, with some hot cheese. Madison's make them and there's no doubt. Mm. Of the yums in there, you bring it out. Just try.
try and say Mattisons without saying mmm. That's it for today's episode, Greg. A bit longer than we thought, wasn't Day it? Day five. Five. Two more to go, Greg, which we'll have the same clothes on for. Yep. If you would like a chance to appear on the Wall of Fame, appearing on the Wall of Fame, na 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 na, flagged. Or if you'd like to send us a message or anything like that, please send it to tnt at totgoo.com. That's tnt at tnt.gup.com. Someone complained the other day that we haven't put their picture up. Oh, no, I felt really bad because... I felt really bad as well. That person has been listening to us for a long time. Shame they haven't been watching us, but they just listened to listening us. Listening to us, yeah, yeah. We need uh, to, we send need... us the email again because she said that she'd bought shirts. Yeah, we, 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 sometimes we just miss them. And she calls us her boys. She said she's loving seeing her boys seven days this week. Please send us the email again and we will feature you on the Wall of Fame. Yeah, well, na, 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 na. The reason is she's from the same place in New York that the last lady was who had the t shirt on. An another one from New York. And and I went there. Recognized no him. one recognised me. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, don't have to be in capitals. Help us to grow the channel because we're struggling on our own. <laughs> we're not struggling. <laughs> we've got 12,325 subscribers. And I reckon when this is finished, we've got three 20, more. 23. Anyway, come on, we've got two anyway, more to do here. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ta ra.